we just set it up so you can log in with your PIV card, which is nice. You don't have to remember your password anymore. So um, actually, let me go back. So when you first get, like I said, this is the home page, right? And you do your login and then you come to this page in Nifty Disk. So this is sort of the, uh, the planning cycle is what we call it. And what I'm gonna show you here is, um, is the, we're gonna walk through the tabs across the top. I'm just gonna show you a very quick example. Like I said, if you had your numbers from your prescription and you wanted to just get that landscape fire behavior, um, the how kind of how easy it is to do. So in this case, I'm gonna click on the cycle. That's our planning cycle, meaning we evaluate our landscape, then we do our planning, then we do our implementation. You can walk around the different parts of the cycle and in the middle is always our map. Everything is central around the map. So in this case, I'm in the landscape evaluation piece and I'm gonna use this section called modeling fire behavior. Okay, if, you if you're starting from scratch and you don't have a landscape yet, um, you would go into the create landscape section. And in this case, you would go into that, you'd find your area on your map. I'll just go back to my, um, I'll just go up here to like around Boise. I'll just pick a place I'm familiar with. It'll be easy for me to navigate. And now I'm ready to just go get my landscape. So say I'm working up here outside Idaho City. Uh, you can change layers in here um, to Google Earth imagery if that's something you like better. Um, you know, kind of depending on what, what you're after. Um, we've got a whole bunch of other map layers. So this is high, whoops. This is high, sorry about that. This is Highway 21 headed up out of Boise. So let's just say I want to grab a landscape up here and uh, and just start fresh. So you can see in IFTDIS, um, you can do it two ways. If you already have a shape file for your burn unit, you could go ahead and um, use that shape file and that would make the landscape around that shape file, or you can just draw a box. So in this case, I'm just gonna draw a box and you select the tool here, you draw a box, and then you pick which land fire data you want. In this case, we've got choices from 2012 all the way to 2020. And you can pick 40 free models or 13. If you still wanna use the 13, that's an option. And then you pick the folder you want it to live in and you give it a name. And then you hit go. And it's gonna go out and get the land fire data, just like the first couple of slides I show you. So once you have land fire data, now you're ready to run a model. So I'm gonna go back to my cycle. And in this case, I'm going to run a fire behavior model. In the drop down up here, we've got three choices. I think for the most part, for the burn plans, the basic fire behavior is what we're all after. Like I said, that's the behave version. And you're just going to say create a run. Then you're going to pick that landscape that you just drew with the land fire data. That's the starting point. In this case, I'm going to grab the one I used in my example with my slides. And then I'm gonna start entering my inputs. And you can do two things. You can just go through these inputs like this, wind speed, uh, 15 miles an hour, wind direction, let's say it's straight out of the west. Um, I'm just gonna use the default crown fire stuff for now. And then my fuel moistures, just like you would do in behave. So I think the moderate prescription for that one was one hours were seven, 10 hours were eight, 100 hours were nine. Herbaceous are, uh, let's let's call it um, 90 and 120 for our fuel moistures. Same things you would enter and behave. Give it a name. So we'll just call this Stinson Creek moderate. Naming things is really important so you can find them. Test, and I'm gonna say uh, save and run. Off it goes. That's all you have to do. So now once that's running, you can see it's been submitted in here and you can check the status by using the little uh, refresh button. So I'll, this is like Julia Childs, I already made the lasagna, I put it in the oven and I already ran a whole bunch of these. So I'm gonna just show you where to go. Let's we'll say it's running and now I'm like, okay, it's all done. I wanna look at it now. So I go to my workspace. And in this case, I have a folder here for all of these model runs that I've done. And you can sort them from the top. In this case, I want to sort model output. And the one I want to show you all is the one that I did with um, the moderate fire behavior. So there it is in my list. 
I click view on the map. And it should zoom in to that burn unit. Um, this is the one that I showed you from the from the uh, sawtooth. And there's my fire behavior flame length. This is my moderate prescription. And in this case, I just want to add in my um, my burn unit boundary so I can get a reference here. Turn that on. There's my burn unit boundary. Let me zoom out, zoom out just a click or two. And there's my um, there's my burn unit boundary. There's my moderate fire behavior looking at flame length. And from here, there's some neat tools. You can use the identify tool. And that's the little eye button up here. And then I can click on the map. So if I want to know what this red pixel is, I can get all the information. So my flame length in that red pixel is 13 feet. Rate of spread is nine chains an hour. And then I can get the rest. I can see what my inputs were for my prescription there. And uh, this will correct. So this says mid flame wind speed. So I put in 15 miles an hour, right? Well, if this knows how to correct that because that's a 20 foot wind speed. And we know we have to do those little corrections and stuff, but if he just does that for you, um, so it, it it corrects it based on elevation. In this case, I used gridded I used gridded winds, so it made those corrections, and now I can see what that would look like at mid flame, and I can click all over the map and get that information. So this is the stuff outside of the burn unit over here. Those red pixels I was a little worried about. Same thing. This shows passive crown fire, meaning torching and spotting. Um, 30 chains an hour. So that's uh, going to be, you know, something I'm going to think about. So, and then I, then what I can do from there is once I look at that, I can turn that off. This other little tool is called the little swipe tool. If you turn that on, you can say, okay, now I want to swipe what's underneath. So I want to see what the base map is showing me underneath there. So in this case, I can now I can swipe the tool up and down. In this case, I can look at my roads, but if I change my base layer to say Google and I want to look at the vegetation, I can zoom in a little bit more. This is what Google is showing me. Now I can look at the swipe tool and I can say, what's going on with this pocket of red pixels? And I can look and say, okay, there's there's a patch right here. Um, and that's what's pick, being picked up in the fire behavior. So I can just swipe my tool up and down. And then I could go out there and be like, is that, did that, remember this is data from 2020. This is land fire data from 2020. Um, maybe we had done some mechanical treatment out there. So that actually, it's different now. So I might need to go in and make that little bit of a correction because that's not actually, uh, it shouldn't be those high of flame lengths. So if you just let you kind of scrutinize that and really take a look at it. But that's about as easy as it is to do a fire behavior run. It's not that hard. If you want to do the uh, comparison thing, then you just go into our strategic planning. You can you can click on the compare weather. And in this case, this is like I showed you. I'd already I'd already made the lasagna, right? So I'm going to go into my landscape fire behavior because that's the kind of run that I did. And I'm going to pick the the Stinson um, the Stinson Creek um, outputs that I looked at. So in this case, I'm going to look at my low, and then it'll automatically pick up some of the other ones that I've done because it, it zooms in on the one landscape. So in this case, I've got my high, I've got a moderate, and I actually ran one based on a 97th percentile because I wanted to compare. I know what 97th percentile looks like to me in a fire season, and that helps me kind of get a start. You can reorder these just by using these arrows, so they're in the right order, low, moderate, high, and then a, then a 97th percentile weather. And that's as easy as it is to, uh, to look at these in comparison. I can turn on that burn unit boundary again, and, uh, and now I've got that, and then I can go click view on the map, and that takes me to the map view. So that's pretty that's pretty much it. Once you run each of your prescriptions and you've got them in there, then they're ready to be looked at. You can start scrolling around, clicking on the map, comparing things, turning the layers on and off, looking at your values, um, all of that kind of stuff. So we've got all of that tucked in here under your under your layer list. If you want to add layers, you can go in here and these are all your choices to add layers and stuff. 
So hopefully that gives you a quick little snapshot of how that all works.